If you have been to Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico, you probably have tasted mofongo. If you haven't, oh my God, you don't know what you're missing, but don't worry. After today, you'll know how to make one at home because that's what we're cooking and you are gonna love it. Let's cook. The origin of mofongo is highly contested between Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. But what is clear is that you can trace it back to the many slave colonies that populated these Caribbean islands. And as with many dishes that originated in these colonies, the ingredients are highly abundant and very humble. Such is the case of the plantain or el plátano. The plantain, believe it or not, is a fruit is in the banana family, but it's usually treated as a vegetable because you cannot eat it raw. You have to cook it. You can fry it, you can boil it, you can steam it, you name it. And you can also cook it when it's green and when it's ripe. For mofongo, we need them when they're green. Now, nowadays you can find plantains pretty much anywhere, in Publix in South Florida for sure, and even in Whole Foods. So it's not gonna be hard for you to find them. The other ingredients are chicharron, which is the nice pork rind with meat on it, garlic, salt, and oil. That's it. Very simple, very humble. In fact, the original recipe is called for you to actually broil the plantains right on the fire. You didn't even need oil. But obviously in modern kitchens, we are gonna fry the plantains and they come out just as good. The only special equipment you're gonna need is a mortar and pestle. Now, this one is very traditional and it's made of wood and you can actually use the pilon as a serving vessel. I've had many like that in different restaurants in the Dominican Republic. Now, that's a clue. My family on my mom's side is from Dominican Republic, right? So I am gonna lean towards the Dominican Republic execution of this dish that includes almost always chicharron. I found that in Puerto Rico, sometimes it doesn't include chicharron because you may add other things. Now, uh, don't, don't hate me for it. This is the one that I'm familiar with. This is the one that I absolutely love and it's very simple and you'll love it too. In most Dominican restaurants, you get mofongo with a side of a little chicken broth. I personally never drink it, I never use it. I don't like adding it on it. I think it just make it too soft. I don't use it, so I'm not gonna prepare it today, but you can do that if you want. Just get a little bit, maybe a little bit of chicken bouillon, with hot water and you kind of make your own little broth and it's great for people. Some people swear by it and they love it. I just don't like it. So I thought I would just keep the preparation simple for you. As always, first we're gonna get organized. The French call this mise en place and all mise en place is, is having all the ingredients and the tools that you need right in front of me. Cooking is always about ingredients, time and temperature. That is why it's so important to look for the best ingredients you can find. This is so simple that this time we're not gonna need a conga line, so we're just gonna go ahead and prep everything we need right now. But as always, missing plus is less stress. Let's prep.
And now we're ready for shout outs. These are the people that are cooking our food, taking pictures and letting us know about it. Try it. First, my uncle Nelson from Venezuela. He actually cooked the huevos rancheras and they look great and he loved them. Roy Maltese cooked the pork belly. Kathy Briseño has been cooking up a storm. She did the chicken steaks, the fish tacos twice and the omelet. My cousin Nelson out of Miami made the salmon and it looked fantastic. Patricia Valencia, my old friend also in Miami, actually also made the pork belly. And my brother Hugo did huevos rancheros in the morning on Saturday and the onion soup for dinner. Wow, what a day of great eating. They both looked amazing. We get so encouraged when we cook our food. Just keep on doing it. You learn, we love it, we get encouraged, we do it more, and the cycle goes on and on and on and on. It's exciting. So here we are. Now, I showed you some red onions, and I don't think I've ever had a mofongo in a restaurant with uh, a red onion escabeche, they call it on top. They use that for another dish called mango. The reason why I think this escabeche is gonna work, even though it's not traditional, is because they're sweated in vinegar. So that's gonna help balance the fattiness of the chicharron. Anyway, it's delicious anyway. This is totally optional, but I think it's gonna work. And so easy to make. You just cut the onions like you saw, and this has been sweating. And again, the difference between sweating and sauteing it's a sweat is basically a saute that doesn't brown, right? So this is it. This is really simple. And we're gonna set this aside until serving. Okay, so now all we need to do is to fry the plantains, right? So we're gonna heat this oil to 350 degrees. Now, what I did is I cut the plantains way smaller than you would for tostones, for example, because with tostones, we're gonna mash them and keep them whole like this. Now, with mofongo, we're gonna mash everything into a pot, right? So what we're looking for is for them to get nice and golden, okay? And obviously cooked through inside. I'm thinking that something this big might take like about five minutes. So here we go. Now, this is two plantains. A large one and a small one. I think this is probably, it looks like this, but once you add the chicharron and everything, this is probably good enough for two people, for one very hungry person, right? So we're just gonna stick to this portion and see how it goes. Now, you may have to both cook the plantains in a couple of batches, and also when you mash them, you may have to do it in, in batches, depending on the size of your pilon or your uh, mortar and pestle, right? So we're gonna start with a group here. And as you add them, keep in mind that the oil temperature goes down, right? So we're gonna do two batches. Actually, this thing defaults to 375. I'm gonna lower that temperature a little bit to 350, okay? So now we wait for it to cook and I'm gonna show you what it's supposed to look like. Okay, it's been six minutes already and uh, see they're kind of golden brown. I'm gonna Put them here in a lining or plate with a paper towel, and then we're gonna add the next batch. We need to move them around a little bit at the be very beginning so they don't stick together. What I did is lower the temperature to 320 because this thing keeps the temperature high all the time so they don't get way too dark. Now, if you don't have one of these that actually sets the temperature that you're cooking at, you need to use a some sort of candy thermometer or oil thermometer, just stick it in there. And like with any frying, somewhere between you know 325 to 375, depending on your stove. The 350 is probably good. These things need to cook for about six minutes because if you put it too high, they will get dark outside and not cook through. And remember, plantains are not bananas. You have to cook them through. Okay, so we're good to go. It's been about six minutes with this batch as well. So something you wanna do is just add salt. Whenever you're frying something, add salt immediately because it's gonna stick better to the food. Okay, so we're ready to start mashing everything together. The first thing we're gonna add is the garlic and uh, 
it's up to you, really. I mean, if you like the flavor of garlic, you can do more. If you don't like it so much, you can just do a little bit and just have a subtle, or you can just skip it all together. Now, I wouldn't skip it if you can tolerate garlic because this just adds a different dimension uh, to the flavor of the mofongo, right? So I add it there with a little bit of salt. It helps with the mashing. And we wanna just mash this thing down. You may not be able to see this, but this one has like two small holes in there. And the garlic is so small that just one in there. So I may have to just, I'm gonna get it out. So many times in cooking, you need to improvise, right? So get it out, mash it out here, put it back in. See, turn that into like almost like a paste. And we're gonna put it back in there. These things are made by hand, right? So it's a little hole that has in there and this piece of garlic was way too small. Now I'm gonna start adding the plantains. I'm gonna do again, I said you need to probably do it in batches. I do have about half of it. I'm gonna go ahead and use this spoon to get everything moving in there. As you mash on the side of things, the other side tends to come up, so you kind of like put everything together. It's almost like a, in a circular motion. Now, we're gonna start adding chicharron, a little bit more plantains, a little more chicharron here for me, and more plantains. And this one's pretty deep, so two whole plantains in here and a little bit more chicharron. As you can see, this chicharron has the crunchy part and the fatty part and a chunk of meat. And that is what you want. Now the planting, when you fry it, it's really very dry, but the chicharron is gonna release a lot of moisture uh, with the oil. Obviously I didn't cook this chicharron because I didn't show you how to do it but you can buy it in a, any number of uh, Latin markets. This was a Mexican market around here at the beach. Just make sure you look for one like this that has a chunk of meat in it. One, I think I'm gonna do two more for good measure. It's funny how you mash on the side, the other side comes up and then you push that side again, okay? I'm just gonna just making sure that everything is blended together and then I'm gonna start mashing again. I'm gonna use a knife around the whole thing. And, cause you could eat it right out of here. I'm gonna try and dislodge the whole thing into the plate like this. Let's see. You can make this into balls, little balls, and just serve them like that. It would be nice if I could keep the shape of the pilon, like that. See, it's a nice shape of the pilon. And, so again, this is very optional, but I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna put some of these on the side right here. All right, and there you have it, mofongo, ready for taste test. Finally, my favorite moment, taste test. Man, isn't this beautiful? I just, I just love mofongo. Man, it takes me back to childhood. Absolutely, my all my visits to Dominican Republic, man. Uh, I always ask my mom, let me take me to eat mofongo. Let me try. Mmm. 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 I don't know if you can hear the crunch. Mmm. It's awesome. Then the chicharron is crunchy and salty. The plantain, even though it's green, there's always a kind of sweetness to plantain. And um, it just, the texture, you know, it's got the crunch and the soft chewiness of the plantain. I love it. And we used very little garlic. Uh, so it has just a hint of garlic. Now which one of these things? Mmm. That is such a familiar favorite to me. It's just amazing. Oh man, I love this. I wanna do the yummy dance is merengue. So Dominican. And to my Puerto Rican friends, I love mofongo in Puerto Rico as well. In fact, all of Puerto Rican food. If you need to heat this up, because maybe it's too much for you, you can just do it on a, either the oven or on a pan. Just heat it up like that and just then put it together again. Mm. Now, I was thinking, what wine can we eat with this? I'm thinking, man, this is Dominican. How about a beer, a Presidente? That's the Dominican, I mean, the number one Dominican beer, right? So, that's it, salute. Oh, it's a marriage made in the Caribbean. You know what? Joanna needs to try this. Come on, Joanna, you need, you need let's exchange. Come on. Hello. <gasps> Oh, Mofongo. Well, as many of you know, I am from the Dominican Republic. I was born here in the States, but that's my country of origin. And this is freaking awesome. So let's see, babe, how you did. 
Mm. Takes me back. Takes you back home, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. Comfort food for a Dominican chick at its finest. Mmm. Mmm. I can hear the crunch. You hear it? Oh my gosh. You kind of have to try this. Okay, one more bite, because I'm watching my carbs. Mmm. 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 <laughs> great job babe. beer is great i'm just gonna look at it awesome another hit great job you guys should cook this told my dominican friends and my not dominican friends you have to try this this is different but it's so delicious man isn't this something delicious i i mean i need to do some more mm. Mm, mm, mm. i'm the little cebollita mm. don't mind her we're gonna do dominican uh, we're gonna do the yummy dance <laughs> yummy dance yummy dance yummy dance merengue merengue mm. Guys, this is gonna be very different for a lot of you. And you may say, oh, that's weird. I know, venture out, get out of your comfort zone. Find the plantain, the platano. You can find that anywhere, chicharron, and then do something different. And maybe not for the family yet, maybe just for you or the two of you. And- um, Or the one of you. <laughs> or the one of you, right? Because uh, you know what? It's pandemic time. You may not be able to go to the DR or Puerto Rico, but you can do it at home. Get on a bathing suit later or shorts and lather up with it. I mean, get out on your tanning outside, whatever it is that you can use at home. And if you're freeze in freezing weather right now, hmm. Imagine that you're in the Caribbean. I promise you, you are gonna love this actually. All right, now, four things. Subscribe, hit like, share with your friends, and- Cook it. Cook it. You need to cook it. You need, I'm telling you, I know it might be different for some of you, but try it and let me know. Now, from the Caribbean, we are traveling to South America, to the home of the Inca. So we are making Peruvian ceviche. Whoa. I cannot wait. Come back and see us.